Hi there, thanks for joining us. It's The Sweet Spot, the Racing Post's weekly golf show. I'm Bruce Millington, and I'm joined this week by the super sub, Joe Champion. Steve Palmer's off this week. He just finds this week too weird. He can't hack it. And the last time Joe was in, four or five weeks ago, he banged in a nice 22-1 to 1 winner, I think, in Brandon Grace. So hopefully he can come off the bench and nod one in again. Joe, before we look at we've got three tournaments. It's a very, very peculiar week. I'll spell out what's coming up. But we'll quickly touch upon what happened, let's say, at the weekend. It's only yesterday, isn't it? Um, Justin Harding and Matt Jones made it a, a winning double for those who kept faith with the leaders after 54 holes. I know I'm a suckler for this. When you get a player who isn't one of the big names and they're two or three clear, I'm always looking to lay them. But um, this time it wouldn't have worked. Harding got it done nicely in Kenya, didn't he? And Matt Jones was really good, I thought, in the yeah. final round. Um I thought it was absolutely superb. That he was getting a bit of heat, wasn't he, from um, from from at one point, but he came through and won by five shots, which was a fantastic performance, wasn't it? Much else to add to that? Uh, no, you've summed it up quite neatly there, Bruce. Really, um, yeah. Justin Harding's a, a good player in that calibre of field, isn't he? And I don't think he uh, he did what he needed to do. Um, there were guys coming at him. That course is obviously um, quite easy for the players. And uh, we'll we'll, talk, we'll uh, touch upon that again because obviously they're at the same place this week. Um, Matt Jones, though, I thought he was brilliant, wasn't he? Um, Wise came at him and then he uh, hit one in the water and faded away. Um, and in the end, it was easy for Matt Jones. But um, that's that course, PJ National, is not an easy course to negotiate, is it? There's water at every turn, and we saw people making big scores frequently. And you saw, I think. What best summed up his tournament was that little fist pump he had on 17 when he hit the green. And that, he knew from there that with the easy par five to come, he couldn't really lose it. But you could Mate, end up I was, I was long line. gone by then. The tournament was won. I, yeah. I drifted away, unfortunately. But, but I mean, he's 40. He's a dual winner on the US Tour now, isn't he? He's, he's obviously got the cojones to get the job done when he's in contention, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely does. And he's won twice at the Australian Open as well um, in his home country. And he's beaten... Good players there as well. He beat Jordan Spieth. He beat uh, Louis Oosthuizen as well. So, um, yeah, definitely can get it done when he's in the mix. So, um, mm. fair play to him. And also fair play for uh, coping with playing with JB Holmes for the uh, oh, final round. God. Yeah, exactly. Because Jones is notoriously quick and Holmes is about the slowest. Now, I think they said Jones went 13 minutes without hitting a shot because at uh, the second because... Um, JB carted his into the into the trouble, didn't he? And then just spent the well, just spent an age trying to get relief and trying to work it out. To be fair, that probably wasn't his fault, that one. But yeah, yeah. well, playing with that snail can't be easy when you want to get on with it, can it? No, not at all. He's, he's uh, slow enough when he's playing well, JB Holmes. And he was, as you say, he's hacking it all, like, all over the place yesterday. So uh, yeah, great performance from Jones. OK, let's look ahead then. It is a very peculiar week, as I've said. On at 4 a.m. on Tuesday morning, we've got. The, what's it called, Joe? The Savannah something or yep. other, isn't it? Savannah Classic. The Savannah Classic, back at the same course in Kenya, the Karen Country Club. The main event this week is the uh, Dell World Golf Championship match play, which is the one with about a zillion runners and, and it's a knockout. And uh, that starts on Wednesday. That's always very random. And then we've also got the uh, Punta Cana event which is a kind of more regulation event starting on Thursday so a lot to be getting on with we'll start with the uh, Dell match play and I'll give you a clue on the prices again shop around as we always say for the best prices but Bryson DeChambeau heads the market at 12 to 1 along with Justin Thomas Dustin Johnson 14s John Rahm 14s Morikawa, Morikawa even 18s and Rory 20s 25 bar so there you go it's a stellar field for a very peculiar tournament take us through the format first before we get your selections Joe uh, yeah, so we've got 64 players here. Um, it should be the top 64 in the world. Um, we've got a few people obviously not playing. Obviously, Tiger's not there. Brooks Koepka, um, Adam Scott, Gary Woodland, and one other who I can't quite think of are not playing. So um, it was the top 69 available players as of last week. So Dylan Fratelli uh, uh, snuck in as the final man. And um, what we've got is uh, we've got 16 groups of four. and um, They'll put, we'll play each other once in sort of round-robin format, and then uh, only the winner will progress to the last 16, and then it just becomes straight knockout from there. OK, because it used to be a straight knockout, didn't it? It, was, it yeah. was mad, wasn't it? But I think probably most of them got fed up going all that way just for 18 holes of golf. Didn't yeah, they okay. want to get the big names on TV as well as much as they can whilst they're still in the tournament as well, don't they? And since they switched to this kind of group format, have we as, as 
has class ridden to the top? Who, who's been winning this in recent years? Okay. Uh, we've had good winners recently. Um, Jason Day won the first one when it moved to Austin Country Club in 2016 and um, DJ's won since. Um, the biggest surprise of them all was probably Kevin Kisner winning last time. Um, he, uh, he beat, he beat um, Matt Kuchar in the final. But generally, we've had uh, top players come in doing well in this. Um, and I expect we'll probably see something similar again because some of the... Uh, the class acts won't make it through the group stage, but most of them probably will. And then uh, from there on, it's um, every man for himself. OK, Joe, um, how many selections have you got? Uh, I've got three this week. And um, we should say that they're playing, uh, bookmakers playing eight places on this. So if you reach the quarterfinals, you're, uh, you're quids in. They're not all doing that, though, are they? So it's really crucial to shop around. I know some aren't. Mm. So just be careful, because I've seen a couple of shows of, of, of four. What you don't want to do is back someone and find that they went out in the quarterfinals and you didn't get paid because you, you basically backed them to each the each way terms were based on them getting to the semi. So it's crucial to shop around for the best place terms. But that's great news. If you can just get one through to the quarters, you've got much more of a chance. I like this tournament a little more. Who's your headline, Joe? Uh, so I'm not going to stray too far from the obvious this week. And um, my number one selection is Justin Thomas, who, of course, won the uh, Players' Championship in fantastic style a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was brilliant there, wasn't he? And over the weekend, his long game came together. He's, he's such a classy player when it all comes together. And uh, I think we saw such a good uh, performance. And he, he, he strikes me, Thomas, he always has as a player who, once he hits form, he stays in form for a while. And uh, this is a track where he, he's uh, reached the semi-finals before um, a couple of years ago. Um, and as I say, he's um, so good when he's in form that I expect he should be able to come through a group um, I just watched the draw about an hour ago. It was, um, as you can imagine, quite a painful PGA Tour affair. Um, oh my God! They actually televise it today. Like yeah, yeah, it was live on draws. golf TV. Yeah, it was, oh. yeah. Um, and Did that uh, Justin, Tom, have Justin Timberlake or someone pulling the balls out? Uh, they had a couple of players um, on on Zoom and um, a couple of um, people probably associated with Dell and other things like that. It's very corporate affair. More and, importantly, did Thomas get a good draw? Now, Justin Thomas's draw, I'm, I've been put off slightly by this, I'll admit. He's got um, Kuchar and Kisner, the last two finalists, but and uh, Louis Oosthuizen as well, who's a former former uh, winner. But I um, I do think that when you're Justin Thomas, you don't need to worry about that. You can just concentrate on playing your game, and he's got the power to cope with this course. I mean, Kisner won round here, and he is short, but most of the time, the longer hitters have done well. Like, Lucas Beauregard got to the, um, got to the semi-finals a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember... That he um, beat Tiger Woods in the quarterfinals, Beauregard. He's a, he's a long hitter. That's his game. And I think, yeah, JT's really going to thrive around here. And um, if he does win, then he's likely to face, um, he'll face one of Matt Fitzpatrick, Jordan Spieth, Matt Wolf, or Corey Connors. Not the, not the toughest uh, heat going, I don't think. Spieth's never been a particularly uh, good match play player. And Fitzpatrick, short. Wolf's been in woeful form. I think Connors probably the. Uh, the dark horse in that group. Uh, he's been playing very well recently. And yeah, uh, Justin Thomas as well. He's got such a great uh, match play record for um, for the US team in the Ryder Cup. They went down, of course, in Paris a couple of years ago. Justin Thomas was the top US point scorer that week. And uh, he's also been the top point scorer on two occasions in the President's Cup as well. He's clearly a good match player. And I think he's primed to go well again this week. You make a very good case for Justin Thomas as well as JT. Who else are you going to go for, Joe? So I've got a couple who haven't actually played in this event before, but I think they really have what it takes to thrive in match play. And the first one is Sung Jae Im, who is pretty much as solid as you can get every week. He's brilliant. And, um, you know, he's eighth last week. He probably, I know Steve put him up. He, he probably was more, was probably expected of him, but it's another in a, a long line of uh, solid performances from Sung Jae Im. Um, he's got the long game class to handle this track and uh, providing the putts start to drop, which is the big question mark with him, he will be in the mix. But, um, I mentioned Justin Thomas, his President's Cup form. Sung Jae Im was the uh, joint best international player at the 2019 President's Cup, and that was on his debut as well. And, um, he's, you know, if this is match play. So you have one bad hole. It's not a massive issue. He makes more birdies than anyone else on the PGA Tour. I know he plays more than anyone else as well. But, yeah, he, he's made 54 more birdies than second place to Emiliano Grillo this season. So I think uh, match play is made for him. And the uh, last one I like is Max Homer, who... Um, is a big price, uh, 70, around 70 to 1. And part of the reason for that is that the guys who are not seeded in the top, they're going to be drawn against someone good. Um, he's in the group with uh, Colin Morikawa, JT Poston and Billy Horschel. 
Um, Morikawa, obviously the man to beat in that group, but I wouldn't necessarily be relying on him. He's not played a lot of match play and uh, who knows how his putting will hold up. It was great when he won the uh, Workday Championship last uh, WGC event, but um, at the players, he fell to, fell to pieces with the putter over the first uh, of sort of the middle rounds and pulled it back late on. But I, I wouldn't trust him as the uh, number four seed in group four. OK, so we've got um, JT at round about 12 to 1. We've got Sunjay at round about 28 to 1. And at around about 80 to 1, Max Homer, like I say, shop around for best prices, best place. Thank you very much uh, for the match play. We'll move on to Kenya now, because like I say, you need to get your bets on before you go to bed on Monday night, unless you're a milkman, in which case you might just be the 4 a.m. start. Now, we're not going to dwell too long on this because we're back at, at the same place in Kenya with a virtually identical field. Um, there's, I don't think there's going to be too much TV action. This is probably going to live very firmly in the shadow of the Dell match play. Um, but what have you sussed for us in Kenya? Yeah, I think when it comes to this tournament, the bookies have obviously got a good handle on it. They um, you know, saw most of them play last week. And um, the guys who performed well last week, Harding, he's obviously been cut massively he's like sort of 16s from 33s kitty armor 14 to 1 oh let's do the market sorry um joe just quickly oh, yeah. uh kitty armor's actually fav with one firm so 12 to 1 kitty armor harding 16 to 1 to follow up Mig migliozzi is 20 to 1 horsefield's 20 i don't think horsefield played last week so he's about the one addition to the field that, that didn't turn up last week although i may be wrong on that he, he was in it last week he was OK, fine. So in actual fact, it's pretty much identical. Roman Langask, 22s. Gorgeous George Cox here, 25s. And a few others at 25s. How many selections? Uh, I've got four in this, Bruce. Go on, then rattle through them, my friend. Well, it's interesting you should mention Sam Horsfield because he's my best bet this week. Um, he was flying under the radar last week, as you've uh, Yeah, so really much alluded so that I didn't think he played in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was eighth last week, as it happened. <clears throat> was he? On his seasonal reappearance, uh, closing with a 65, which is probably why he crept his way towards the top 10, um, having started a bit slower. Um, Sam Horsfield is a, is a top player. Um, if you uh, think about in when the, the European Tour returned in the summer, um, he won the Hero Open and the Celtic Classic after finishing 10th for the British Masters. And then they played um, that second uh, of the two Wales events, and he went off at sort of about 12 to 1 favourite for that, of sort of finished uh, down the field. But... Um, those two wins were great. And then suddenly in the autumn, he, he caught COVID-19. That ruled him out of the US Open. And then he uh, had a number of uh, back problems, which have really uh, hitting him in recent events. But um, he looks to be over that now. As I say, he didn't, uh, didn't start the season in, um, in Arabia like most of the guys did. Came back at Karen last week and played really well. Um, promising signs that he's uh, back to his best. And we can expect him to be a bit better for that run. I expect he'll, uh, he'll be a lot less rust rusty now and um this is a place where the long drivers i mean it's, it's quite a confined tight track but long drivers have been able to take advantage of these short par fours and these uh these uh, gettable par fives and uh horsefield drives it with some of the best on tour and i think um last week should be hugely encouraging for him so uh he's definitely my uh my best bet of those who uh played last week whose prices have been cut a bit but um he should probably be a little bit shorter than he is OK, and three others, Joe, very briefly. Uh, yeah, I'll stick with um, Garrett Higo, who I put up in the Racing and Football Outlet last week, and I know Steve was keen on. Um, I'm happy to back him again at this course. He was fifth here um, on the Sunshine Tour and 16th last week. Uh, looked like he was going to place and then made a double on, on the 15th. Um, but I, I feel like he, he obviously likes this course, and um, that's three solid performances in a row from him. So... Um, a better putting display in the final round probably should have seen in place. So I think Higo is a star of the future and one that I really like. And I've got two more at bigger prices who um, did both play last week, but probably um, one of them started really well, and that was Adrian Moronk. He was um, available about 100 to 1 this week. And um, Moronk opened with a 65. He's like, he showed that he can handle this course and, um, and then uh, had a third round 67. It was just the second and the fourth round that were the problem for Moronk. Um, he does need to be more consistent, but I think at 100 to 1, you can definitely take the chance with a player who's shown that he can make low scores around here. And the other one around a similar price is uh, Grant Forrest, the Scotsman, who was um, 19th in Qatar on his, um, and, then, and then was 33rd in this last week. Um, now, 33rd doesn't look that good on paper, but if you actually look into it, 
he started on the 10th tee in the first round and through uh, 14 holes, he was four over for the tournament. And at a course where Justin Harding's won at 20 under, that's just not going to get it anywhere close to getting it done. Um, so, so he played his last 58 holes in uh, 14 under par. And, um, you know, if, if he just doesn't make those same mistakes early on again, then I feel like he's he's got a great chance of uh, in, at least improving on 33rd. I expect him to be sort of more towards the top 20. And you can get him at just short of uh, three-figure price, which seems fair. He's one of the longest on tours and he's got to grip with the course now. So I, I expect him to do better. OK, excellent. Thank you very much, Joe. So we'll, we'll just summarise there. You've gone for, take us through just the names again of the, of the Kenya selections. Uh, so Sam Horsfield's the best bet, Garrick Higo, Adrian Moronk and Grant Forrest. OK, and the third event this week takes place in beautiful Dominican Republic. Punta Cana Championship. It starts at midday on Thursday, kind of conventional US start time. Uh, Thomas Peters, 16 to 1. Charlie Hoffman, 18 to 1. An old sweet spot favourite to be first round leader. Emiliano Grio, you can get him at round about 22s. Jonathan Vega, 25. Thomas Detry, 25. Danny Willett, 28. Brennan Wu, 28. And it's 30 to 1 bar those. OK, so it's not a stellar field, Joe, is it? Um, who would you expect to come out on top? How many are you putting your faith in? I've got another four for this one. Another four. OK, give us your headliner. Uh, well, I should say, um, of those at the top of the market, I'm not particularly interested in them. So I've looked a bit further down here. I mean, you're looking at Thomas Peters and Emiliano Grillo. They just never win. I think Charlie Hoffman was probably the best bet of those. Time form squiggles all over the place there, yeah. isn't there? A lot of non-winners there. Yeah. Um, no, my best bet comes a bit further down. I mean, you, you may call him a non-winner as well, but um, it's Charles Howell the third. <laughs> He's the patron saint, mate. Mind you, I tweet my words because... Um... We, you know, we always go on about Charles Howe. Just he, he's, he's, you know, he's got an allergy to the top five on a Sunday, hasn't he? And uh, I think he got it done a couple of years ago, didn't he? he sort of rolled he did, back yeah. the years. I can't remember where that was, but uh, okay, make the case for Charles Howe the third then. Yeah, so Chucky Free Sticks. He missed the cut on his debut in this last year, but I'm not too bothered about that. Um, last time out at the Players Championship in a much, much stronger field, he drove the ball fantastically all week. I think he ranked second for total driving, finishing ninth at the Players. And that's superb form in this sort of grade. And um, you know, this is uh, a much easier test for him. And he's, he's played well at the coast before. Um, possibly the best course fit for this sort of a correlating course is uh, El Camaleon, you know, um, the Maya Cobra. In Mexico, Cobra. yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's got Paspal and Grass Greens as well. And Charles Howell's played that. He loves that tournament. He's, he rocks up there every year. And he's finished 23rd or better in nine of his 12 appearances at El Camelion. He's got a few top tens there. And um, this is a guy who we, we know he doesn't win often, but he's won three times on tour. He's, he's made heaps and heaps of money. And you're getting him at a, at a sort of around 45 to one here. And um, this is the sort of test where you expect Charles Howell to really be one of the, the market principles. I, I thought he'd be shorter. I can only think it's only because he missed the cut in this last year. I'm not too worried about that. His last win came on a coastal track at the RSM Classic as well. Um, I think he's a really good bet this week. Excellent. Charles Howell the third, And three others? Uh, yeah, three others. Uh, Tyler McCumber is the next one. He was runner-up behind Hudson Swafford. Uh, we should say this this tournament um, has been is one of three tournaments to be played twice on the PJ Tour this season. Uh, the other two are the Masters and the US Open. So the Corrales is in good company this week. Um, yeah, Tyler McCumber, runner-up behind Hudson Swafford in this in September and 19th on his only previous appearance in 2018. And uh, I feel like Tyler, Tyler McCumber, he's been playing really well recently. He, he was um, at the Genesis Open, he, he uh, Genesis Invitational rather. He was uh, going well through 36 holes. I think only Sam Burns was ahead of him and then he, he faded. But that's, that's a much tougher event Um with all those star names at Riviera. And then he was 22nd at the players, not quite as good as Charles Howe, but still a, a pretty good finish. He's generally been in decent form and he returns to a track where he's played well recently. Uh, he's one I really like. And uh, the other the uh, other two, we've got 2018 winner of this, Bryce Garnett. That was the first year this was a PJ Tour event, having previously been a, a, a Corn Ferry web.com event. Uh, yeah, 2018 and was fifth um, in the Puerto Rico Open. I expect someone that goes well in Puerto Rico, they can probably expect to go well in here. It's a similar field. It's a similar coastal test. And 22nd at the Honda last time out, another decent performance for someone who knows the Corrales course well. He should be quite confident. And one at a slightly bigger price who's uh, been struggling a bit, but he's definitely one to follow by the coast is Pat Perez. Um, 
Pat Perez won the Mayakoba Classic in 2016. I've mentioned those Paspalum greens. And um, he was he played this last year. He was 21st on his debut at the Corrales. So expecting to build on that. So uh, Pat Perez, if he turns up, you know, he's never one to put full faith in. But if he turns up on his game, then he could go well. The volcano, has he calmed down a bit or does he still lose his, lose his temper every so often? Uh, I, I suspect he probably still loses it from time to time. Last time Good. I saw him, he had fantastically long hair and beard. Oh, yeah, around, yes. But... Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's one of those people who everyone would say, oh, you need a lockdown haircut. And he'd be like, no, no, I'm always like this, wouldn't yeah. he? So I think basically you're fishing in round about the kind of 40 to 50 to 1 uh, waters, aren't you? But I've, I've seen Perez at 75 and you might even get bigger. I'll tell you what, Joe, that's a fantastic effort, given that it's Monday. You've got three tournaments. We only knew the draw for the Dell um, about an hour ago. I admire your excellent study in there, Joe. That's super. Where can we read you this week? You're obviously the resident tipster in the Racing and Football Outlook. Are you getting involved covering for Steve in the Racing Post as well this week? Uh, no, I'll, I'll be in the RFO again this week and uh, Ian Wilkerson will be covering these tournaments in the uh, RP. His Kenya Open preview is online now. Oh, excellent. Go to racingpost.com, click on sport and you'll find Wilco's tips um, and then, obviously, like I say, get that fine weekly newspaper, the Racing and Football Outlook. Joe is in there every week. A fine golf judge he is. Right, Joe, before we go, I just need you to solemnly and simply recap your selections, because we know that obviously a lot of people want to be doing cross doubles and trebles. And there's so much going on this week, they might not have been able to catch them all. So WDC, no, even WGC, it's not darts, uh, Dell Match Play Championship. Uh, so I've gone with Justin Thomas, Sung Jai Im and Max Homer. In the Kenya Savannah Classic, you're going for? Sam Horsfield, Garrick Higo, Adrian Moronk and Grant Forrest. Don't forget, that starts at 4am on Tuesday. And then the Punta Cana Championship, which doesn't start until midday on Thursday. Charles Howe, Tyler McCumber, Bryce Garnett and Pat Perez. Beautiful work, Joe. Thank you very much, champ. Well played. Good luck with your tips. What have we got next week? We have got the Texas Open next week. Only Texas one tournament. Open. Just the one. Okay, Steve, we'll be back for that. In the meantime, action-packed week. I hope you managed to back a few winners or at least get some each-way money. Don't forget to bet safely. And don't forget to join us next week for another sweet spot. Mm-hmm.